Today we're going to build a very cool chainsaw sawmill for under $50 with 10 2x4s and a 1x6. I've had some time to look at a lot of different chainsaw sawmills and for me there were a few important key criteria. First of all, I wanted to be as comfortable as I could be working with this thing. So I wanted to be in a standing position. I didn't want to have to lift the log really high onto some platform and I wanted to be away from the chainsaw. There were a couple models on the market that fit my criteria, but they started at about $1,000. You throw a five dollars to $800 chainsaw into that, that's a pretty good price tag just to start some chainsaw milling. So I decided I was going to build one. Now the first step in this was to create a rail or a ladder that the chainsaw mount can slide up and down. This is probably the most important part of the build, to get it as square as possible, as parallel as possible, and as smooth and straight as possible. So I took my time, used the straightest 2x4s I had, and made sure that everything was as level and as even as I could get it. I'm using a glue up that I did on a couple videos ago where I showed that new style of kind of parallel clamp. I'm using that for this project, um, but you don't have to. You could obviously use plywood if you have some scrap plywood laying around. In fact, that might be better in some cases, but for this case, I'm gonna go ahead and use this glue up. I have a lot of viewers in places where plywood is ridiculously expensive, so I wanna show them that you don't have to use plywood for this build. You can just glue up a little panel of two by four and use that. Back to it. Now on this slide mechanism that slides back and forth on the rail, I got it close, but I wasn't as particular as I was with, with the rails. There can be a little bit of slop and movement in this, which is good because it's wood and it will flex and expand and contract. As long as it was captured and could move freely, I was okay with it. There's going to be quite a bit of weight sitting on it, so that'll help. don't do this kind of thing very often, but I wanted to take a minute and say a big huge thank you to two people I love and adore very much. This particular hand plane that I'm using right now was made by Tony Rulo of Hillview Wooden Metal. And a friend of mine, Jenny Bowers, who's an engraver, took the time to put an amazing engraving on it. And this has easily become the, my favorite tool of all time. I don't think I've ever owned a tool that I've adored and appreciated as much. So guys, thank you for your hard work. I really appreciate you and your talents and skills. This thing is a pure joy and pleasure to use. Love you guys. That's enough of the mushy stuff, let's get back to it. Because I'm using 2x4 material for the sled, I put on a couple of cleats on the both front and back to help support it in case it still wants to warp a twist. Now 
some people might find it a little silly, but that little sled gliding back and forth so easily on that rail made me very happy. sled working well, the next step was to put a handle on this thing so I could push it back and forth. Next up was to build a tower for the saw to move up and down on. And this is really complicated. It's a box made out of 2 by 4s With the 2x4 box done, the next thing I needed was some way to mount the saw that would move up and down the box. Now before anybody gets their panties in a bunch, just know that those two bolts aren't the only thing holding the saw in place, and I'll talk more about that in an upcoming video. So to move the saw up and down the carriage or the box, I just used some threaded rod I picked up from the big box store. It was like six bucks. With the sawmill nearly done, I just needed a place to mount a log. Now, before we get too far into this, I do want to mention this is the dullest chain I've ever had on a chainsaw that I can remember, but I didn't want to wait for my new chain to come in to test it. I 
I know you can't see my face right now, but I am grinning from ear to ear. I am super happy with the way this came out and the performance of the sawmill. Not so much the chain, but the sawmill's doing really good. Really looking forward to sawing up a bunch of logs with this once I get a proper rip chain in. Big shout out to my Toolmasters members for going through this build with me and the four or five iterations of this mill. And thank you for all the feedback and comments. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> I'd like my throttle control and extension cord. Um, <laughs> so I'm stopping here with this particular video. I'm going to do another one now. This is a super, super dull chain, chain that I have on this saw. This is actually the chain that came with it. I haven't sharpened it. I've cut up quite a bit of wood with it. And uh, if you saw the last video about freehanding saw milling, that's the same blade I used or same chain I used, not sharpened or anything. Uh, as far as the mill goes, you know, 40, 50 bucks, two by fours and some uh, threaded rod and you have yourself a chainsaw mill. Now I've seen some ones like this out on the market, but they started at like a thousand dollars. I'm like, no way. For 40 or 50 bucks, you could build your own. Um, I'm really happy with this setup. Now there's some improvements I'm going to make to it, so don't go blowing up in the comment section, do this, do that. I already have a bunch of improvements I'm going to make to this, and I will put those up in a next video coming on Tuesday or Wednesday. I have a rip chain coming for, the, for this, and we'll show this mill in all its glory using a rip chain and really getting the job done. So I'm looking forward to getting that up. So um, I mentioned if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget, don't forget to hit the bell notification next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when that next video comes up. You can see me putting this mill to task with a rip chain and a whole bunch more material. We'll talk more about how the saw is mounted, we'll talk about some improvements for this, and we'll put on a much better throttle system and play around with it a little bit. So that video is coming soon. Appreciate you guys. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll talk to you all later.